Okay, uh, so yeah, welcome again uh, to DevOps Toronto. Uh, this is a Zoom meetup. Um, well, uh, if you do not know me, my name is Sebastian. Um, I'm, uh, I'm in the Slack group. I've been organizing the meetups uh, for quite some time now. Um, I'm running it today on Steve's behalf because he's not able to, to join, unfortunately. He's actually presenting, he's going to present on, on um, I believe he's DevOps Con. Yeah, he's in Berlin like right now. So yeah. So our speaker today is Aurora Lee. Uh, she's gonna be talking to us about uh, building serverless delivery pipelines on Google Cloud. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry again, give me a second here. Okay, so since it's 5.10, uh, I'm not gonna talk too much. I'm just gonna just gonna thank our sponsors here, here, uh, CloudBeast and JFrog. Thank you so much for your support over the years. Uh, thanks to these guys is that we have been able to run the meetup smoothly over, over the past few months. So yeah, uh, without further ado, um, Aurora, if you can hear me, uh, uh, please go ahead. I'm gonna leave the the screen to you, so yeah, you can start. Perfect, thanks Sebastian. Let me share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen okay? Great, yep. Yes, we are. All right, yeah. thanks everyone. Um, <laughs> Thanks for uh, the invite uh, for me to talk here. It's very excited. Um, it's been a while since I last talked at a community event, so I'm really uh, glad to be here. And hopefully next time we can do something in person instead of virtual. Um, yeah, so today, um, first of all, I'm Aurora Lee. I'm a customer engineer here uh, at Google Cloud, and my focus is within corporate Canada. Uh, which means we work a lot with startup, startups, uh, mid-sized corporations. Um, so we do engage with uh, a lot of the communities locally. Um, for myself personally, I do have a specialization in uh, application modernization. So for things like CI, CD, SRE, serverless, uh, that's my um, kind of interest. Um, uh, you can see I have my uh, email address. I have my LinkedIn for uh, LinkedIn uh, as well. Uh, happy to connect if you have any questions regarding either Google Cloud or anything in general. I'm happy to chat after. Perfect. Um, so first off, um, I'm not sure if you've heard of Dara. It's DevOps Research and Assessment. Um, so we do have some quick checks. I just want to do an advertisement here. Um, um, if you just uh, Google search Dara DevOps quick check, you can see a web form where you can uh, quickly assess uh, how your team is doing with uh, your current DevOps um, setups. Um, so there are a few golden signals we are measuring, including deploy frequency, like how often do you deploy, lead time, uh, how much time do you need before any deployment, change fail percentage, uh, how many of your uh, deployments are failing, and also time to restore. So how long does it take for you to recover from a failed uh, change? Um, it's quite interesting, like we, we do have um, a few ways to run it. Uh, we do have a quick check. We also have a full hour workshop where you can get into details and get more recommendations about your uh, your team's DevOps practice. Um, so if you're interested, just um, Google search Dora um, and um, you can get more information about it. Okay. All right, uh, so talking about DevOps, I, I would like to first um, talk a little bit about the trends I've observed. Uh, so I've been um, working for a while and I've been at Google Cloud with uh, for almost two years and I've been working mostly with startups uh, since I joined Google Cloud. But before that, I was actually a network architect. Um, so the first thing 
uh, or first tool I've used for automation is Ansible. Um, uh, if you still remember, there are a lot of um, procedures you will need to do in Ansible. So you have to be very specific about each step, each task. Um, uh, so it's very imperative. Um, you will need to understand uh, what you have to do step by step and put it into script. After that, uh, I moved to uh, another startup consulting company where we use a lot of Kubernetes. Um, so that's where uh, we move a lot more into uh, declarative, meaning that you don't really care about steps or the deployment steps are actually handled by computers or by servers. You don't really have to worry too much about uh, what you have to do step by step. You only need to declare what you want to have at the end stage. So um, I think that's part of the reason why Kubernetes was po very popular. Uh, you don't really need to worry about uh, the middle steps. And then moving forward, um, now I'm working at Google Cloud. I work with a lot of startups again. Uh, a lot of them um, don't even want to manage Kubernetes because uh, they only have a few people uh, running the application, running the, uh, the development, running operations. So they want to have as many managed services as possible so that they can focus on their core values. That's where I see a lot of serverless coming up, uh, including serverless runtime, serverless pipelines. Um, it's kind of like outsourced. Uh, so as much as they can outsource, they will do that. And now moving into this new year, I'm, thinking, I'm seeing a lot of interest or a lot of topics coming up about AI powered. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have played with a gener generative AI tools. Um, we also have a new product, at least from Google Cloud, we do have a new product that's coming up. Um, so it's not only a chat bot where you are having fun, you can also manage your cloud infrastructure with AI powered. There are a lot of features that's already released, including security instance, um, security checks, uh, but more to come with AI powered tools that you can use. Um, so from the trends, uh, at least from my career's perspective, from the trends I've been observing, I feel like a lot of, uh, I started with uh, a lot of main uh, brain power I have to bring to the table. And now we're moving more and more into machine powered. So I do not need to think too much at, um, right now. I just need to um, trust the machines and just use whichever resources I have. And uh, I believe one of the reasons is because um, the compute is actually cheaper right now compared to let's say five years from now. For, sorry, five years ago. Uh, and also another um, like overall trend I'm seeing is we're moving from coding to asking or requesting. So before we have to write a bunch of code uh, with all the procedures, uh, then we have to write some kind of formatted text like YAML files for your declarative um, uh, definitions. And now with AI powered, uh, hopefully we can just ask with natural languages, like we don't even need the YAML file. We can just ask uh, the generative AI tool uh, to provide us Terraform code or to provide us some pipeline code. Uh, that's really, really exciting and I'm looking forward to see that. Um, actually, I'm not sure if in the audience, uh, if there are anyone that's trying to use um, some of the generative AI tools to debug or troubleshoot your uh, your code, your code is actually uh, very powerful. So I would encourage you to do that. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat or uh, do a hand raise or just stop me. All right, uh, so going, uh, going back to what I'm planning to do today, 
so I, unfortunately, I do not have the AI powered tool yet. Uh, right now, I'm, I will be focusing on serverless. And I'm going to introduce a few uh, tools uh, I will be using, or a few um, open source tools or uh, managed tools I'll be using today. First of all, it's uh, a scaffold. So uh, it is an open source project that's created by Google. Um, one of the power of it is it's runtime agnostic. So you can develop your code on um, your local machine on a local cluster. And then you can also deploy into a remote cluster on any cloud. Uh, of course, it has to be containerized. And now, um, just recently, uh, the support for serverless is released. So now you can deploy it, first of all, to Cloud Run. And hopefully, um, it will support other Cloud in the future. It is very easy to use. Uh, you will need to go through some steps to set up. Uh, but uh, it also have some really powerful features uh, you can leverage as well. Um, it's already packaged, so whenever you see, let's say, a sample repository you want to uh, leverage, just do a git clone and uh, run scaffold, then uh, you will have your applications running. It's pluggable, so if you already have your pipeline, um, it's not super disruptive. You just need to plug it in uh, so that your pipeline is more easier, so easier to manage. You can also run it anywhere. So as I mentioned, from your local machine or uh, you can use it in your pipeline as well. All right. Um, another product I'll be using is called Cloud Deploy. Uh, this is a Google Cloud product. Um, this is a continuous delivery tool and it's very opinionated. Uh, so it's having uh, what Google Cloud considered as best practices built into uh, the product already. Uh, you can see some uh, centralized management, centralized metrics from this product. And it's uh, fully integrated with uh, some toolings we have. Um, it's quite easy to use if you have, you've used Scaffold. Uh, this should be very simple for you to set up. And uh, as I'll show you later in the demo, uh, we do have some metrics that's uh, running for your uh, deployment pipeline. All right, um, so another serverless tool uh, or runtime uh, I will be using is Cloud Run. So Cloud Run is um, for you to run containerized application on a fully managed environment. So it's very similar to GKE or Knative. Um, the big benefit of it is uh, Google Cloud is managing it for you. So you only have to care about your own application and your own configurations. Um, but all the infrastructure is ready for you to use. It's very easy to deploy. Um, there's automatic HTTPS set up for you. You can have a custom, you can set up custom domains as well. Uh, you can use any language, any library. Uh, since it's containerized, so there are um, not a lot of restrictions in terms of languages you're using. It's portable. Um, so we do have, I do have uh, customers uh, moving from Cloud Run to Kubernetes or the other way around. Uh, and a big benefit of it is pay per use. Uh, so if um, for some reason your application is not accessed, uh, by any of your users, you won't be paying for it. Awesome. All right. Um, so before I go into the demo, here is a quick architecture of what I'll be showing. Uh, so first of all, um, most of them are, or all of them are running on Google Cloud. First of all, I'll show you um, a um, IDE I'm using, which is on Google Cloud, uh, called Cloud Code. I'm, uh, then I'm pushing my code into Google Cloud Source Repository. Um, and then uh, I'll be running some CI steps in Cloud Build. After that, I'll be using Cloud Deploy um, to make the deployment. Uh, here, uh, we have multiple runtimes we can use, uh, but for today's 
a demo I will be using CloudRun. And also uh, cloud logging and monitoring will be available to you. Uh, but hopefully everything goes really well. So we do not we do not have to troubleshoot. All right. Cool. Uh, another thing I would like to just highlight before the demo is the pipeline design. So here is uh, what I have already set up. If you're a developer, whenever you have a new feature, uh, after you test it locally, you can push it to your repository. Um, and then automatically it will kick out, kick off a cloud boot for CI steps. Um, so that after this, you will have a, uh, a container or a container image that's ready inside artifact reg registry. This is um, like Docker Hub. Um, so uh, but it's running on Google Cloud and it does have some reliability features as well and security features as well. After that, um, Cloud Build will start Cloud Deploy, which is your deployment tool. Here, um, first of all, I will be deploying to, uh, I have three environments, uh, dev, staging, and prod. So first of all, I will be uh, automatically deploying to dev environment into a Cloud Run instance. Uh, after that, uh, I will be, uh, if everything goes well, I will uh, use Canary release to, um, to route 50% of my traffic to the new version of uh, my application in my staging environment. Here, I will validate if everything goes well. Uh, if it does, I will say, OK, this, uh, this change is stable. I will move it. Uh, move all the traffic to the new version. After staging, uh, I'll go to prod. Before that, uh, I'll make sure someone, I'll, I'll have a second pair of eye to just check my code and check everything is okay. And then I'll push to prod. Um, prod will be more careful. So first of all, I'll test only 10% of my traffic into my new environment. If there's no complaint from the, from my customers, I will then push all the traffic to my new uh, new release. All right, sounds good. So now it's demo time. Let me share. Um, can you see my cloud shell right now? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Uh, all right. Um, so I do have my environment up. All right, so uh, I already have everything set up um, here. So this is my Google Cloud console. So if you're not uh, super familiar with Google Cloud, uh, this is where you can see all of, all of our offerings and services. And right now I'm doing, I'm using Cloud Deploy and I will be using um, my run app delivery pipeline. So inside here, we do have a pretty nice GUI where you can see uh, three different stages of um, my environment. Uh, you can also see some, uh, I would say, basic metrics from here. So how many deployments you've been do doing, your frequency, and also fa failure rate. Uh, everything is configured through a YAML file. Uh, so here you can uh, specify the stages of um, uh, of your applications, and then also the targets where you're going. And this is also where I define the strategy of my canary releases. Uh, for example, for staging, I'm saying I'll, I'll just go with 50% because I don't have real customers and I want to 
um, have a faster release, uh, but for prod, that will be more careful and only have 10% in here. And I'll also run a verification uh, step as well for my production. All right. So um, this is what uh, I will set up as a DevOps person. Now I will switch to my code. Uh, this is very simple, uh, hello world. I already have it running in all my environment. Uh, so I do have, let's say, um, uh, this is my dev environment. This is my staging environment and uh, my prod environment as well. So this is my prod environment. Perfect. Cool. Um, now, suppose I am a developer. I do want to do another release of my application. Uh, so this is very simple. This is only a web app. So I will just do a simple change uh, of my environment, uh, of my code. So uh, I'll just change my web page a little bit. Um, let's see what we can change. All right, how about we add a background? So right now there's no background uh, in my home page. Now I'll need to I'll uh, add a background, which is uh, already inside my repository, which is uh, clouds, basically. Perfect. All right. Uh, so I made this change. Uh, as a developer, before pushing my code, I would like to quickly check locally. So let's try to run it locally. Um, so what I, I will be using is a plugin for Visual Studio Code. Um, it's called Cloud Code. Oops. All right, uh, so from here I can um, debug. I can also push it directly to my uh, environment, but that's not where, what we're doing today. Uh, let me try to debug locally first. So I'm running, uh, it will be running on Cloud Run, so I will just use the Cloud Run emulator. Uh, so it is running. If we go to the detailed code, uh, you can see it's already using scaffold, although it's not uh, really on the surface, but on the back end, it's actually using scaffold. Okay, um, so it'll be running for a little bit. Um, it's setting up the environment right now. So you can see it's starting uh, a local mini cube. Uh, so this is uh, a small Kubernetes cluster I can use. All right, um, now it's building the artifact. Uh, so, just quickly on um, what I have in my sample application. I have a few pictures uh, for my web page. I also have a folder called manifest. This is where I define custom, uh, customize. Uh, if you are familiar with it, this is a tool um, that's, um, sorry, let me try again. Yeah, um, customize is a tool where you can, um, use templates to define your uh, configurations and your deployment. And uh, inside here, I am specifying a developer prod and staging environment. And for each of them, it will have some uh, different setups. Uh, then I have uh, a cloud build YAML file. This is where I define the building steps. All right, um, and I also have the Docker file for um, 
or building um, the container. And after that, I have uh, some of my code here. And beside that, I also have a scaffold um, configuration as well. So here I'm defining uh, my scaffold configuration and how I can use it in, in different, um, different profiles. Here I have a profile mean environment in this case. And uh, I'm also deploying it into Cloudrun. Perfect. Uh, so cool. Uh, looks like my local development environment is up. Let's check it out. Cool. Um, so if you see my um, deployed version of it doesn't have cloud in the background, uh, but here I'm just adding cloud in the background. It's really simple change. And as a developer, I'm happy with this change. So I'll be pushing it um, into my environment or into my uh, repository. Cool. Uh, now it is pushed. So here is my repository. Um, so at 5.33, uh, I made a commit to add cloud into the background. And after that, um, if we go into cloud build, we'll see a build that's running. So right now uh, it's building the container image. And after that, it will be pushed into my repository. And then after it's pushed, uh, I'll use cloud deploy to deploy into my environment. Uh, it's running cloud deploy now. Um, so if I look at my repository, I will be seeing an updated image in my repository. And if I go to cloud deploy, delivery pipeline, I should be seeing another release for my delivery pipeline. All right, uh, so I just uh, did another deploy and now it's queued for dev environment rollout. From here, you can also see uh, a few artifacts. Um, um, since you're already using uh, a scaffold, it's actually hydrating. Um, your configurations and artifact. And if you do want to take a look um, at the artifact, you can do it after it's, uh, it's ready to, uh, for you to see. There are also some logs uh, you can look into as well. All right, uh, I think it will be ready in a few seconds. Now 
it's in progress. So here we can see the YAML file that's being used. Still in progress, but let me check here. Cool. Uh, I see uh, it's being deploying now. Uh, so now it's deployed to my dev environment. Uh, let's give it a try. So this is my dev environment. So if I refresh it, now I have the cloud in my background. Very simple change, uh, but then we can uh, actually promote it into my next environment, which is staging. And here I have a canary release, meaning that only half of my traffic is going to the new version. Here I can also check the differences uh, between manifests as well. So from here, um, really the only thing that's changing is my image tag. So let, let's promote this. And now it's in progress for staging. Mm -hmm. Uh, while it's running, are there any questions so far? I posted a question on, on the chat in case, you know, you wanted to look at it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I need to switch. All right, uh, yeah, Minikube is running in GCP Cloud Shell. Um, it's very, very small, so um, it, uh, it can handle it. And debug edge cases. Um, yeah, you can see the verbal speed logs uh, when you are doing it locally. Um, it's inside your, um, it's inside here. Uh, when you when I was debugging, you can actually see the details detailed logs uh, from here. 
And um, so, yes, it is using Cloud Build um, for building the image. All right, um, so in terms of uh, manual approval, I'll be showing you uh, that in a minute. Cool, uh, now I already, um, the deployment is already complete for the canary release. So if I, this is my staging environment, if I refresh it enough time, I should be able to see the clouds. And let's just check quickly here for my uh, staging environment. Yep, it's in 50-50, so I keep refreshing. Oh, it's coming up. Um, yep, so half of the time I will see the clouds and half of the time I, I do not see the cloud. Uh, if I'm happy, if I'm happy in staging, uh, I'll push it um, to advanced rollout, meaning I'll have 100% of my traffic going into the new release. All right. Um, so in terms of manual approval, uh, I set it up so that I only need manual approval uh, for production. Uh, so as you can see in the UI, I do have a manual approval icon here. So after the staging is stable, I'm able to promote it into prod and before it put, it's being pushed into prod, I'll need to do a manual check. Um, yeah, well, we are waiting. Yeah, while we are waiting, I uh, just want to quickly touch on um, another feature that I really liked. Um, I won't say it's best practice. So, so here I'm setting up uh, three different projects in Google Cloud for three different environments. And right now I'm um, running it into Cloud Run. So let's say you have your, th this is your first application and you want to do a second application that's running on Cloud Run as well. You can actually reuse uh, what we have here. The pipeline will be exactly the same. You are just deploying a new service into CloudRun with the new name. So when you are doing that, um, let's say uh, from here, this is, um, let's say we have another um, application. Let's, see. Uh, let's say we have another application All right, uh, so this is, uh, again, very simple Node.js. Uh, I already have manifest loaded. Uh, we have scaffold, but let's just delete this quickly. Um, all right, uh, so I have the manifest, I have my application. I do not have a Docker file though, uh, but if I do a scaffold init, it will auto generate me a configuration file that I'm able to use. Um, so when I'm checking here, um, it can do some image building. Uh, it's using build packs. So meaning that I do not need to specify my Docker file. It can just use an open source um, project called build packs to build my images. After that, it's using, uh, it sees, uh, I have customized, so it's using a few manifest in my customized, uh, but for some reason it's messing up the dev and my base. Um, but from the look of it, uh, it's pretty good. I just need to make uh, some modification here. Uh, that's not a problem. So here I'll need to change this to base and my profile is dev and I'll change this to dev. And since we are deploying to, to Google Cloud Run, I'll just say this, cool. Um, all right, 
And next thing is I will need my default repository. Great. Um, so um, here I'm setting up my default repository for scaffold, but now I'm running the build process locally. All right. So let's run this. Meanwhile, let's check staging. Okay, staging is complete. So I'll promote this into prod. All right, uh, as you can see, uh, now I need to do a review uh, manually. And let's see. We'll check all the changes um, that's being deployed to prod and then I'll approve it. After approval, uh, this will be delivered to prod. Yeah, um, I know we are pretty much at time, um, but just quickly, um, as you can see with scaffold, um, it's fairly simple to set up and then on, um, in combination with cloud, cloud build and cloud deploy. Uh, everything is serverless, so if you're not using it, uh, there's no charge to it. Um, this is, again, just one way of doing your CICD with serverless. Uh, there are a lot of tools you can leverage as well, um, but uh, from a hosted solutions perspective, uh, cloud deploy can be uh, quite powerful. All right, um, pause here. All right, uh, anyways, to see the logs in GCP, yes. Um, so everything um, can be linked. Um, so we, um, if you go into one of the deployment, um, you can see all the logs here. Um, so it's not really very interesting here because I'm doing a very simple, um, my application is fairly simple, uh, but all the logs and details can be found. And cool. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, any questions, live questions? Yeah, I yeah. this is uh, so wonderful. Uh, I like it. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have been using the scaffold on my local MacBook for for several weeks. You know, build up uh, the mini mini cool. Yeah, it just works uh, perfectly. So my question mm -hmm. is, um, if I want to manage the GCR, uh, manage the deployment to JKE by scaffold, so what kind of authentication I need? Um, so I do have. Um, sorry, uh, I do have authentication set up. Uh, so right now, uh, it's all using service account. Oh, service account. Yes. So you, um, I should run a command line to uh, personalize the service account to to the uh, to the Skyfall command, or how to do, do the authentication. Uh, so if you are running it locally. Um, Uh, you can actually set it up inside Scaffold. So there is a configuration where you can say which service account you're using. Oh. Um, so yeah, um, just refer to the Scaffold uh, documentation. There should be some um, uh, instructions there. Um, yeah, sure. Oh, definitely, I'll follow that. Um, one more question, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. For the, um, the cloud run, you know, in my organization, we disabled the public uh, endpoints. So what's, what's the easier way I can, you know, create a cloud run application, I can access to it from my local laptop? Um, uh, so depending on where you are at, at your development cycle, um, yeah. that's why I do like um, cloud code where you can do an emulator locally uh, so that uh, you can run your test, at least your uh, um, feasible test uh, locally. Um, but if your cloud run is um, blocking any uh, an authenticated request, um, I don't think there's a way around it because that's um, maybe your security practice, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, um, so we do have use cases where you can have uh, IAP 
uh, in front of it. Uh, oh, so okay. Identity of our proxy. With that, uh, you can actually authenticate and then access your cloud running services. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let, let me try the IAP. Yeah. No Thank you so much. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, no worries. Um, so cost salad, I believe. Um, yeah, uh, in terms of manual approval, um, if you set it up, uh, it can be set up inside um, Cloud Deploy. Uh, so you're just saying for prod environment, I need manual approval. Uh, that's that's possible. Um, uh, but again, Cloud Deploy is for deployment instead of CI. So uh, if your deploy if your deployment fails, uh, you have to actually roll back. I don't think there is a way you can pause a step. Let's say if uh, your deployment fails um, in staging environment and you do not want to uh, proceed into production environment, you can abandon that release uh, and then roll back your staging environment into the previous release. Um, uh, but in terms of pausing a step, um, uh, I'm not sure what you mean um, in terms of a deployment pipeline. Yeah, uh, so if you want to test your Terraform new configuration and uh, check the plan before deploy. Um, so if that's the case, I don't think Cloud Deploy uh, it's a good fit uh, in your use case uh, but because this is where we we are kind of certain that uh, your your new release is working and then we'll be releasing it into different environment uh, if we're using um, CI equivalent in GCP so we've been using a lot of um, cloud build for CI uh, so um, I haven't, I didn't show it in my demo, but I actually have a cloud build actually. I do have a cloud build um, set up. Yeah, um, so here I'm using cloud build to uh, complete a few tasks um, considered CI, so I'm building my Docker files and publish it into uh, my repository, if that's what you're asking. And from here, you can actually uh, pause it. No workflow. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I get your question. Maybe we can, uh, if possible, we can uh, connect offline. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Perfect. Uh, if not, I think that's it. Uh, thanks everyone for your time. Um, I really appreciate this demo and opportunity. I hope you find it um, useful. Um, just a quick add plugin. Uh, if you're working with startup, we do have a lot of startup programs. So I'm really looking forward to see you uh, at another time. Yep. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much, Aurora, for your presentation. Uh, it was really cool. I saw that you already answered a few questions, so thank you so much. Uh, well, as for the people that's left here, um, we currently didn't have any speaker planned for July. So yeah, we are actually currently accepting some submissions. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for your time, everybody. And thank you so much, Aurora. Um, well. 
uh, I don't see any more questions here in the chat, but if anyone has anything else to ask Aurora before we leave, uh, now's your time. You can open your mic or whatever. But in any case, uh, well, the recording will be uploaded to YouTube tomorrow. So, yeah. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for everybody. your talk so far. What's an interesting overview? Great. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye, everybody.